Man, this thing is ugly without its fiberglass. All right, so let's work on the rear suspension next. Now, because we're copying a VW Bug, I want to do the standard style of VW Bug trailing arms, which is basically just two pivot points mounted here and here somewhere. So basically, we just need to figure out where these need to be mounted and then figure out where the tires are going to go and then to connect the tires to the heim joints using tubing. So I will admit, I wish I knew more about this kind of suspension geometry because I did, before tacking the stuff in place, I did Google, like, what should the angles be? What is, are they level? Are they at an angle this way? And it's, I couldn't find, I couldn't find any information on this kind of, it, it almost seems like just the word trailing arms is kind of universal for, for just rear suspension because trailing arms could be just a single pivot point here with radius arms or radius rods. Could also mean this kind, where it's just two pivot points right here. I've also seen some videos of people calling four-link suspension trailing arms. So it's like, well, is what style is this? And you know, I, I yeah, I couldn't find any information on the angles. And so basically, I'm just looking at pictures on Google, like trying to see, like you know, it looks like they're at an angle. It looks like around roughly 10 degrees. It looks like they're level. So I kind of just basically copied that. So hopefully. Hopefully this is correct. I don't know. I put these level at 10 degrees angled this way. So yeah, hopefully this is correct. We'll soon find out. But uh, next thing is we have to put this thing on the floor so therefore we can set up the tires. And this is where we figure out how wide this thing's going to be and where exactly the tires are going to be going. I do want to have this thing kind of a stanced outlook like normal uh, Baja bugs. 
But we don't want it to, the tires too sticking out because I don't want this thing looking weird. And I do want long travel suspension, so we, we do want the tires a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit distance between here and here. But we, we also want to have the tires kind of line up with the wheel wells of the fiberglass body. Yeah, basically just kind of lay it out and figure out what looks best. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. The rear is 52 inches wide, the front is 53, so the front is just a tiny, tiny bit wider than the rear. I haven't measured the length yet, but we're more just focusing on the width right now. Clearance with the tires and the fiberglass body is pretty good in the rear. The front is pretty good, I'm just, I'm not sure how, you know, what the clearance is going to be once these tires are turning and the suspension is moving up and down, we may have to trim a little bit of this, which is not the end of the world. Now I just need to measure the distance between the bearing carrier and the frame and the center of this to the heim joint, and then figure out how I'm adding tubing between here and here. It's a good thing I checked this before tacking this into place because, yeah, this does not allow for the full amount of suspension travel that we want on this thing. So, when I saw that, I was like, crap, I have to completely redesign this. But actually looking at it, it's like, no, I, I, I only have to redesign the top portion because the bottom, while it does limit the 
down, the upward travel of the tire, there's only so much upward travel that we can have before the frame hits the ground. So I think that, I think that's plenty. So all I had to do was redo the top portion to have this extra bend in it to allow for the fold downward of the tire. So yeah, this should hopefully be all the suspension travel that we need for this thing. Luckily, I didn't have to redesign this whole thing. I just had to redo how the top portion is. So it looks like we have a decent amount of suspension travel. Our main limit that we have is how much this side of the CV axle can bend up and down because this because this side of the CV axle can bend a lot more than this side. So hopefully we have a decent amount of suspension travel, but we're not really going to find out until we get this in here and figure out exactly where this is going to go. But now this thing is not completely done. I do want to add more plate steel around here as well as possibly add a little bit of cross bracing in between here and here because most of the force on this thing is going to be trying to twist it this way. So we need to add just more plate steel around here to strengthen it up. But before we do that, I want to start working on the one on the other side and get both of them to this point. And then once we get that done, then I can add a little bit more plate steel. But for now, I want to start working on the one on this side. So when having to measure a distance uh, constantly to make sure that this thing isn't moving, what I like doing, instead of using a tape measure, which is kind of hard to do when you're measuring off of a round surface, I, I take a piece of eighth of an inch TIG filler metal and I cut it to the exact length that I need and I can use that to much more easily check the dimensions and everything. Mainly I'm just checking to make sure that this thing's in a straight line. We don't want the tires towed in or towed out or anything. So it's not super critical that this is uh, the same dimension. I just need to make it, you know, even on both sides. To make sure that this thing's pointed in a straight line. So it's only off by a sixteenth of an inch and it's 
uh, a little bit closer on the in the front, which I think that's I mean it's a sixteenth of an inch across like what what's two feet? I think that's fine. So next thing is we need to mount the CV spool and we need to figure out like exactly where it needs to go and the heights and everything. Now, something I want to say is because uh, ever since I built the mini trophy truck project, I've been seeing not a lot of comments from you guys, but some comments about how some of you are highly negative towards chain drive, which I think is kind of hilarious. But uh, I'll admit, I kind of went a little overboard with the two-wheel drive, the four-wheel drive mini trophy truck project, which is all chain drive, but that's just a huge experiment to just see if it works, how well does it work, and can I build stuff to be strong enough for a vehicle like that. But uh, And then when I started building this, I saw more comments like that, of like, oh, not another chain drive, when are you going to get away from chains, and how horrible chains are, <laughs> according to you guys, but... So something I do want to say is I was originally planning on building this vehicle using this. This is, I believe, a Dana gearbox. It's not high, doesn't have high low, basically just forward and reverse, but basically this would allow us to not have ch any chains. Basically just put this, uh, put the, C the uh, secondary pulley on this, and then it goes straight out to CV axles. And when I pulled this out to see if it'll work for this project, I measured the gearing that this gearbox has, and it is unfortunately... 13 to 1, which is way too slow. For this vehicle, I called Redbeard because he knows way more about these gearboxes than I do. And he told me, if I remember this correctly, I think he told me that uh, there's three different options for these. There's 13 to 1, 10 to 1, and 8 to 1, which 8 to 1 is, is still too slow for this. The gearing that I'm choosing for this is going to be 5 to 1 between the jack shaft where the secondary pulley is and this. That's going to be 5 to 1. So 8 to 1 is still a little too slow. So this thing just, it wouldn't work. Also, the pull, the secondary pulley actually doesn't fit on here. Once you put the CV axle on here, this secondary pulley is just too big. So unfortunately, this, this just wouldn't work. But yes, I did try to see if I can, for this project at least, not use chain drive and use something like this. I also looked at other Polaris gearboxes, but they were either too big, too expensive, or had the four-wheel drive portion, which I don't need. We're not. I don't want. The, I don't want to build this thing four-wheel drive. It doesn't need it. It's a VW bug. That's when I just decided to to just build that. And I saw even more comments about it's just like, oh, not another chain drive, and how some of you guys think that they're horrible and they're unreliable. And it's like, no. Also, the the, the good thing about chain drive is we can fine tune the gearing. We can't really do that with these. So that's another bonus of chain drive but uh anyway let's let's mount this thing uh we need to figure out how we're mounting it and, and exactly where we're mounting it i did decide to just cut the cv axles in half because it seems to work for other projects that are bigger and heavier bigger tires to just you know weld them together so i just decided to cut these in half and i'll just yeah we'll just lengthen that i only have to lengthen these about like two inches or something like that yeah if it works for those projects it should work for this
Now, I think it's been a little over a year by now that I've had this ArcDroid CNC plasma cutter, and I know it. I, I know I don't use this thing very often, but man, is this thing nice to have. If you have a complicated part like this that you need to cut out a couple of, simply cut it on a piece of cardboard, you trace it using the trace function that this thing has, and then you can cut out as many as you need. So. Yeah, if you're a machinist, if you're a welder, having a tool like this is just insanely awesome to have. I absolutely love this thing. Alright, so I was able to tack this down, but I can still slide this thing back and forth because I haven't tacked this onto the, on the main chassis yet. Now, because the engine is going to be out, you know, sticking out the back, we don't want it sticking out the back too far, and because we're using CV axles, we can offset this a little bit from the straight line of the hubs, because actually right around right there, that's in a perfect straight line with the hubs and the spool, but because of CV axles, we can offset it just a little bit to make more room for the engine and hopefully it's not going to affect the suspension. So let me kind of play around with it. I'll see how far forward I can scoot this thing without it really affecting the suspension travel and I'll finish tacking this in place. Honestly, I kind of wish I thought of this before building this CV spool because the awesome thing about VW Bugs is when they're doing wheelies, most, not all of them, but most of them, they have, I, I, don't know, I don't know what you call it, but they have one brake disc on this tire, the other brake disc on that tire, and they have a lever that they can operate each brake disc independently. So as they're wheeling, you can actually steer the thing with operating one brake or the other which uh, I think that would be kind of awesome to do with this. It was a little too late for that because, yeah, this isn't a differential. I kind of wish I thought of this. I, I wish I built this with a differential inside. Maybe that maybe that's a mod that, that I can do later on once this thing is fully built. Maybe I can replace this with an actual differential and allow for uh, differential steering. I think that's what it's called. Or just, you know, differential brakes and you can steer as you're doing a wheelie. I think that would be awesome.
All right, so the rear suspension is not finished, but it's at least at the point where next video of this project, we can start working on the front suspension and possibly adding the shocks to this thing to see it finally standing up on its own. Now, like I said earlier, I, I wish I thought of this before building the spool for this, for the CV axles and everything. Because, so, so normally I don't build a differential in most of my off, or like all of my off-road vehicles because for a vehicle, an off-road vehicle that's on, that's on loose traction surfaces like 96 or 97 percent of the time, you don't need a differential. And actually, having a differential makes it a little bit more challenging off-road because then it's slipping and all. You guys, you guys know that. But uh, yeah, that's why I don't normally don't do a differential. But for this vehicle, I didn't think about that of having the possibility because it's, I'm pretty sure this thing's gonna do wheelies. I didn't think about ha possibly having the uh, capability of being able to steer this thing while doing wheelies be if this thing had a differential and if I had brakes that, you know, operate this tire independently and that tire independently, possibly even this like foot pedals and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, because actually a, a friend of mine, Scott the Deuce Man, he recently, like a couple days ago, uploaded a video of old footage. Him and his friends out in the dunes at like Glamis or something like that years and years ago and uh, he was showing off one of his vehicles that he built uh, that was called Centipede and in that video was a VW, it wasn't a bug but it was a VW sand rail or something like that and it was doing wheelies and steering and doing donuts while wheeling and it's like that was I thought I thought that was the coolest thing ever, and I, I always knew that existed, but I never really knew it. I never knew how cool that was until seeing that video. Now I'm like, how can I do that for this? So by the way, I'll link that video in the description below in case you guys want to check that out. But uh, yeah, so now I'm now I'm pondering the idea of you know completely getting rid of the spool. It's it, so if I do do a differential, it's still gonna have to be chain drive because I do have to mount the engine this way. Just because of how the engine is, the CVT, you know, it has to have a certain distance between, you know, the primary and secondary belt. And if I mounted the engine this way, I'd have to mount the engine basically above, you know, the differential. If I did use an actual differential, which would make the engine super high and just top heavy, and I don't really want to do that. So I have to mount the engine this way and everything. So I, I it would still have to be a chain drive differential, but uh, I'm really pondering the idea now to... Uh, because at first I was thinking, you know, like, well, maybe that's a mod that I can do later on. But n now it's like, well, because I'm having to weld the axles, what I don't want to do is weld the axles, get it running, get it working and everything, ride it once and be like, okay, now I want to put a different, put a differential on this thing. Now I have to mod it and cut the axles again and have to redo everything. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking, like, what if I do this now? Yeah. I'm going to look into seeing if I can install a differential in this thing. Like I said, it's going to have to be a chain drive dif differential just because of how this setup has to be. But uh, anyway, I'm getting excited for this project. I think this thing's going to be pretty awesome. Now, next video of this project, like I said, we're going to start the front suspension. And then once that's installed, hopefully we can also install the shocks. and finally get this thing standing up on its own. Then video after that, hopefully getting the engine installed and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah. I think this thing's gonna be pretty awesome, but uh, anyway, guess that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.